Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me again for the 100 day project. Today I'm going to be showing you guys days three and four. So day three is a little unconventional. Um, I decided to make um, stamps made out of erasers that I got from Daiso, which is similar to a dollar store. So um, I was highly, highly inspired by Dee Dee Cantron and by Amy Bishop. And I will link both of their channels down below. They're both amazing artists that you will um, want to be following. So um, I'm just going to do some stamps here for you so that you can see I'm using some archival ink in black and um, you can see they're just more abstract florals kind of in the theme obviously of the 100 day project and um, they're really easy to work with these erasers the only negative is you can kind of see on the ink pad that it kind of leaves a little bit of residue from the from the actual eraser but other than that, um, it's not bad. And they're super easy, fast to make. And I think they came out really cute. I share these on my stories, but I thought that um, I would share them here. And if you want a tutorial on how to make them, I'm by no means a, <laughs> a novice. I mean, I'm definitely a novice of uh, making stamps. I am not... Um, I don't know any technical terms or anything like that, but if you want to know the way that I did it, um, just drop down a, a message down below and I will um, do a tutorial for you. So there you go. There's my little stamps and I think they're so cute. Um, so now I'm showing you how I started off the page. I laid down some gesso, which you can see there, and then some texture paste. Can you see that yummy, yummy texture? And this is the book that I'm gonna be working off of, and this is going to be my inspiration. If you want the name of the flower, um, you can see up above there. So again, I'm taking my Pilot uh, fountain pen in blue ink, and I am gonna roughly sketch the floral that you see there. And I'll show you kind of where I got my inspiration. I just took a piece of that floral, since it's, you know, a big floral. I only took a piece of it and I'm going to kind of line contour, except I am removing the, um, the pen from the page. So it's not a true line contour, but I am looking at the book while I am drawing. So I'm trying not to focus on what I'm doing on the page necessarily, but what I see. So um, as you can see, it's definitely a, a loose sketch. It barely resembles it, <laughs> um, but that's what I love about these florals. So um, you can see right there, that's the section that I decided to work on. And now I'm going to get my watercolors out. So for my watercolor tin, I have this old Godiva metal box that I've been saving for, gosh, lots of years, like at least like 20 years, I think, maybe longer. And I didn't know why I kept it, um, but I ordered some Daniel Smith, and I don't even think these are quite half pans. I think they're a little bit smaller. Um, those are all the colors that I have um, right there in that. So if you want to pause that right here, you can um, read, I've put down the names of all the half pans that I own. Um, what I will say about the Daniel Smiths is when I started, when I first put the color down, I realized it's way too concentrated. Um, so that's what you're gonna find when you have watercolors that maybe are a little bit higher quality is going to be your um, the consistency of them. And then also Daniel Smith is um, infamous for the um, genuine stones that they use. And so you'll see shimmer. So if you do not like that, I would not get those watercolors, but they are beautiful. Um, it was a present that I got myself for, I think it was for my birthday last year. I decided to get these off of a seller from Etsy instead of just buying the tubes until I knew kind of what I wanted. Um, and I'm so glad that I got them. The 
pan that you guys see at the bottom, so those are um, magnetic, so that's why they stick on to that, the tin. And then I have a palette that I've just wedged inside of there and it just fits perfectly. And that's the, I believe it's called Mei Ling. I, hopefully I'm not uh, butchering the name, but um, I will post it down below. And I got it off of Amazon and I have to say it is a beautiful quality. I believe that it is probably just a little step above like the Prima. Um, I love the Prima. Those are the in the Jane Davenport. Those are the first watercolors that I pretty much dabbled with. And um, I feel like these are just a little bit creamier, a little bit more vibrant. And for the price range, I think it's a great way to go. I think they're like around $20, $30, something like that for all those colors, for 36 colors, I believe. So, and I think the price has gone up a little bit because a lot of people were buying them. Um, so I think I paid a little bit less than what they're going for right now, but they're still a really good deal. So anyways, check them out if, if you're interested. So um, what I noticed here is that um, as my last video or the video before, I had said the when you're working with a fountain pen, it's water soluble, meaning that whenever any liquid touches it, it's going to move. It's not going to stay put like a Sharpie would. And so um, I noticed that it was moving a little bit too much. So I tried not to go to the edges as much um, because it, because I was using blues and greens already. Um, when you're using a contrasting color, I think it works a little bit better. But this way it kind of, um, I don't know, it kind of mixed a little bit too much. So I kind of go back and fix it. And you can see that bottom floral right there, the like the berries, they got all like combob combobulated, is that a word? <laughs> Into one. And so I'm going to go back over and kind of messy sketch over them to kind of create more of a, a berry shape. And that's honestly what I love most about abstract florals is that you have the permission to do that. You don't have to color in the lines. You don't have to have shapes that are perfect. And if you go out and take a walk today, just look around at nature and there is no straight shape. I'm looking out my window right now and the trees do not have straight lines. They're crooked and they're wonky and they have knots. And that's what's so great about them. And I think that's what I love about abstract florals is that um, I tend to go to that like perfectionist zone where I want things to be a certain, like a, like a coloring book. And, um, then I'm not happy with the result because it's not real. And so I feel like, although this is like a, you know, it's a rough take on what I saw on the page. It's, you know, it's not fine art per se, but it makes me happy. So, um, I totally 100%, um, encourage you to try these florals and you can see I'm doing it. I do have the video sped up um, to instead of one times speed, the two times speed, um, just to be able to upload it to YouTube a little bit easier. But the whole thing took me about 20 minutes to do. And that is the whole, the whole thing, the, with the exception of the gesso. I had done that the night before. So um, they are a quick almost instant gratification project. So let me know if you do try them. Just tag me and I would love to see what you come up with. And this is it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed watching the process and that I was able to help out in any way. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'd be more than happy to answer them. I look forward to having you join me on this journey and I will see you later.